Five Nights at Freddy's, an indie horror game made by Scott Coffin in 2014, abbreviated to FNAF, has become one of the most popular video game franchises to date. While the lore of its game story launched the franchise to a higher standard of fame, the game got immediate notoriety for the way it uses visual and auditory elements as well as the mechanisms of the game to create an extremely uncomfortable psychologically distressing environment for the player. The main series consists of nine video games taking place in locations connected to the fictional family pizza restaurant franchise named Freddy Fazbear's Pizza after its mascot, the animatronic bear, Freddy Fazbear. In most games, the player assumes the role of a nighttime employee who must utilize tools such as security cameras, lights, doors, and vents to defend themselves against animatronic characters who inhabit the locations and become mobile and hostile at night. They must last 10 minutes each round, or night, by conserving their power by managing when to use what tool. If all the power is used, the protective doors cannot be shut, and the game is over. A primary element that contains most of the game's horror is the uncanny valley that the animatronics reside in. They look too humanoid to be a cartoon, but too robotic to be alive. The game produces vaguely vocal sound effects that the player can conclude comes from the animatronics, but don't actually see them coming from their person. They're also so distorted that to call them human is incorrect, but they sound vocal enough to sound like a person, making these animatronics feel like an otherworldly threat. These two elements cause the enemies of these games to be unsettlingly uncanny. The worst part is, their sole mission is to slowly migrate towards the player's location. You don't see them move, however. They just randomly appear in other places of the restaurant. Another unsettling aspect. Another frightening factor is that you, the player, are unable to move. Most horror games, even just video games in general, have the ability for the playable character to fight or flight. The only ability the player has in FNAF is to open and close doors, security cameras, and turn off and on the lights. The player is stripped of its autonomy of mobility and has to solely rely on and utilize their senses to learn the animatronics' habits in order to know how to defeat them. This absence of action is horrific, as the player has a lack of control of the situation. There's also an absence of information due to being unable to consistently see where each animatronic is and not consistently be able to observe the animatronics with the security cameras. There's also an automatic lack of information the player has simply due to none of the animatronics habits being told beforehand. The only way to learn is to be in that excruciating environment long enough. This combination of a lack of information and a lack of action are the obstacles of the game, and the only way to obtain more information is to lose even more ability to take action, and vice versa. This dance of give and take is not enough to win the game. The only way to overcome these obstacles to win is to gain control of the situation by learning the visual signals and auditory clues set in place. Security cameras and maps of the location provide obvious visual signals. But there are other examples of visual signals that are either atmospheric, red hearings, or distracting versus actual advantageous warning signs. The setting being dimly lit, for instance, is an example of an atmospheric visual, but also a distracting visual as they muddy the sight of important information. Further into the game, there are hallucinations of flashing words that are also visual distractors and red herrings that cause stress for the player. The security cameras having visual noise also is an example of distracting visual signals while the player is trying to gather information. Auditory clues are hitting alongside auditory red herrings, distracting audio, and atmospheric audio that is just diegetic. One advantageous audio clue is that specific to Freddy, he has different laughs and every time it is played, it means that he has changed location. This gives the player a clue of how close he is to them and calculates when they should close the door before he comes charging in. Another is the sound of pots and pans banging. This is a signal that an animatronic is in the kitchen without ever needing to see it on camera. Sounds of flipping up the camera, sound of the camera failing, doors closing, lights being turned off and on, 
power shutting off, are all in-world immersive sound effects. But the sound of the desk fan, while an in-world sound, is loud and unnecessary, distracting players from being able to pick up on actual important information, causing them more stress. There are more misleading red herrings that are completely random to further stress and distract the player. There are strange swirling swishing sounds that are barely audible and are confusing to the player, as well as a pipe organ playing a happy tune that is a juxtaposition to the creepy atmospheric making the organ playing randomly just more unsettling. All these factors, the auditory clues, red herrings, and atmospheric sound effects, the visual signals and visual distractions, and the habits of the animatronics get more intense, fast, or introduce new versions to keep the player on edge and to keep the level of difficulty challenging for the gamer, as well as keep their stress levels high to continue making the game creepy. Five Nights at Freddy's has reached notoriety it has today by utilizing its visual, auditory, and mechanical elements to create a very frightening experience that is unlike any other video game beforehand. It has truly revolutionized and challenged the video game horror genre to manipulate the player's psyche in order to achieve a truly horrific experience.